Hello, Anteater fans. Michael O'Sullivan here with head coach Russ Turner as we recap the uh, 2013 and 14 men's basketball season here at UC Irvine. Coach, uh, now that you've had a couple weeks kind of digest and reflect on the season, I know a little disappointment at the end with the Big West tournament, but still a very special year here at the Bren and uh, for your squad. Another 20 plus win season for you, you being named recently NABC <laughs> District 9 Coach of the Year. And uh, you could just tell the buzz with the community here and the student body. I know you got to be proud of the culture that's being built here. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, we are pleased with a lot of things that happened this year, but, but as you alluded to, it's still um, a strong feeling of disappointment that we didn't accomplish our primary goal. You know, we're back on campus now with our players after spring break, and right. that's, uh, that's been the theme of, of, you know, what we are talking about now is, that, you know, how do we make sure that we accomplish what we set out to accomplish next year, and what do we learn from you know, what we experienced this season. I think we learned we can be really good. I think we learned we can be consistent. I think uh, those things are real positive. But uh, when the stakes were the highest for us this year, we, we allowed ourselves to be beaten. And that's a tough pill to swallow because I think we had the best team. And, you know, I love tournament basketball because you have to prove that over and over again. And we right. didn't do it. Uh, but I am really proud, especially Chris McNeely's a senior and of our staff and you know of our team for the progress that we've made it's important for us to continue to build on that progress as you suggested and i know you talked about at length how proud you are of chris you guys spending four years here together and how you've seen each other grow yeah. uh, him as a player you as yeah. a coach yeah. but uh when we sat down before the season i know you talked about and of course a lot of excitement about the freshmen you had coming in here mm -hmm. but how you never want to oversell your recruits <laughs> but yeah. you knew these guys yeah. could play and, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, especially did. at times, you know, Mamadou Njai and Luke Nelson were huge factors. Yeah, they were, and and we thought that would be the case. Right. And you're right, I was cautious to not, you know, overstate what I thought they'd be able to do. I don't think I would have stated much more than what they did, though. And uh, I think both those guys improved significantly. I'm excited for both of them. I think they can both uh, be some of the top players in our conference next year. And uh, that's not to mean that they will be counted upon to carry us because we've got other good right. players in our program who are also getting better. Uh, but the improvement that Mamadou made especially probably surprised me. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not surprised that he improved. I may be surprised at how much he improved, how much better he got, how uh, many <coughs> things he did better than I thought he might do. Um, we've still got a long way to go with right. him. Uh, but right. the exciting thing is, we know he's going to keep getting better because of how badly he wants to be good, how willing he is to work, and, and how smart a person and player he is. And then same thing with Luke. You know, Luke, the most important thing for our team right now is that we improve physically and we get stronger. And I think that's the same thing for Luke. I think his game's going to naturally evolve as he gets stronger. I think that we learned a lot about utilizing two really talented backcourt players and Luke and, and Alex together. And I think we're going to get better at that. I think that uh, rather than have... Alex play almost exclusively at the one and Luke almost exclusively at the two. I think those guys will become more interchangeable yeah. as we move forward, and that will really help the two of them. It will help them play off of one another better, and I think it will help our team too. So we got a lot that we learned from what's happened this year and a lot that we're targeting to get better about right now, but I'm really excited that uh, we can work beginning now for a long period of time now with the quarter system, right. you know, all the way through June. We can work at getting better now and then uh, have a great summer as well. Well, it truly was a special season, and you know, congrats to you again. And I know there's a lot of excitement about next year, too. But uh, we've seen you on CBS recently <laughs> over the last uh, week yeah. or so. Uh, it takes more in. training than it looks like. <laughs> right. It's not that easy. Coming in as the uh, guest analyst for uh, some of the NCAA tournament games. You're heading off tomorrow to North Texas for the Final Four. Yep. I know that'll be uh, exciting and a very intriguing Final Four we have here. Start with the early game on Saturday, if we could get some of your insight. I know we're not CBS, but the Florida-UConn matchup. Florida, 30 straight wins for this team, but their last loss to UConn in a thriller yeah. back in November. Know, what are you looking that? for out of that game? Well, you know, it's going to be a great game. I think both of them will be great games. All four teams have made the Final Four worthy of being there and are potential national titleists. Yeah. Um, 
I'm surprised a little bit at the level that UConn's played. I, I think they've been better at this time of year than a lot of people thought they might be. Their seed was not particularly high, but they've played outstanding basketball throughout this tournament. And they've got the confidence that they can beat Florida. I think that's important. But I'll give the edge to Florida, especially since UConn beat them already. Uh, I think right. they will be really on edge to play that game. I think uh, they will be playing with a little extra of something to prove, which can be the difference in, in a time like now. I mean, there's pressure on both teams, obviously, the opportunity to play for a berth in a national title game. But Florida is really good. Um, and my pick would be that they'll win, but I think it'll be a good game. And the nightcap, Wisconsin and Kentucky, Wildcats certainly showing why they were picked preseason number yeah. one, really clicking at the right time. But Wisconsin have been so impressed, at least I have, with just how smart they play, how they move yeah. the basketball. That's a very interesting matchup to me. What do you think about that? Yeah, two real different teams. Yeah. And uh, you know the, the athleticism advantage that Kentucky's going to have will be extreme. Right. Uh, but there are other advantages it seems like Wisconsin has because of how confident they are now in the style that they're playing. You know, Wisconsin's probably a team that has been overlooked a little bit because they had five losses in a period of two weeks during the season. Right. So they've only got seven losses on the year, but five of them came in a two-week stretch from the middle of January through the end. You know, that'll be a good game. I was surprised Wisconsin could beat Arizona. I was, I was shocked at that, really. Um, and it would shock me in some ways for them to beat Kentucky, too. But at some point, you got to say it's not a shock anymore that they're right. successful. So I, I expect two good games. I expect two good games. My, my thought is it'll be Kentucky and Florida in the finals, but it could go either way. Coach Russ Turner, thanks so much for the interviews you did throughout the year after the no, game. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the offseason, and we'll talk to you in a bit. Right, thanks, man. Right. See you next time, Eater fans.